Art Chat is made possible by the support of the Artistics Harmonies Association. Create your next aha experience with us. Hi, everyone. Wanted to wish you all a happy new year. I hope 2023 turns out to be your best and most exciting year yet. Uh, in December, I recorded a art chat with Kevin McPherson, and that's what's going to follow here. Don't forget to join us at our art chat community. It's free and available at artisticharmoniesassoc.com. Love to see you there. Love to see some great conversations between all of the artists and creatives that listen to this podcast. Uh, let's get in touch. So here is the art chat with Kevin McPherson. Enjoy. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Art Chat. I'm your host, Linda Riesenberg Fissler. And today I actually am really excited because I get to talk to my old mentor. <laughs> old as in we were working together many years ago, not as old man, right, Kevin? <laughs> so... well, a little of, little of both right now. <laughs> no, 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 no. You look about the same. So, so, you know, we're cool. Um, yeah. So Kevin's been off doing a lot of great things and um, we work together back in 2004, five, six, somewhere in there. Um, they should probably do this like 2000, right? Um, but anyway, the, we worked on Artist Mentors Online. We went to New Zealand together, which I posted some pictures on social media with that. And it was like, oh my God, has it been that long ago? And, um, you know, I, I owe Kevin a lot because, you know, he got me started painting and um, really studying and thinking about how to paint and what to paint and, you know, emotions and, and all of the wonderful things that I'm sure we'll probably get into in a conversation. So welcome, Kevin. Well, good to see you, Linda. It's yeah, it's been a long you. time. We did a lot of great things together. And yeah. some of the things we did, like Artist Mentors Online, we were a little ahead of the curve. We, you know, <laughs> we were. <laughs> but we did a nice program that lasted a year. And that, that was really Fun. nice for students. And um, you know, I still work with those students. Three years. Well, they were year programs, right? Right, year programs. And we had yeah. the first session with uh, the 10 that we had originally, uh, 10 or 12, somewhere in there. And then we had a second year with second year students and first year students. And um, we still did some, I think we did something in the third year, half a year or something like that. So at least that's what my taxes yeah, show. But, but it was, yeah, it was a good program we put it together. Was. But, you know, as the computer and pre-Zoom and all those type of things. It was, um, you know, it's an interesting one to try. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, that was, it was a lot of work technically because of where the computer systems were at that time. But mm -hmm. um, yeah, now I think I've lost my coding completely because I think it's just totally passed me by. But um, yeah, but it was, it was great. It was a lot of fun. We had the, the uh, meeting in February in Taos and me who's scared to death to drive in snow. <laughs> you know, I went up and visited there. Um, I had some folks up there as well in the, as a, um, you know, three-day workshop or something. I think we did, I can't remember yeah. all the details, but that, that was a lot of fun. And I think after everybody left, it started snowing and it was like, oh my God, we're never going to get out of here. <laughs> so it was, it was yeah. funny. Well, we did a lot of good things together. Yeah, uh, we did. A lot of different facets and yeah, the yeah. travel too with Passport and Ballot. So it was fun. Yeah. Good to see you and good to see that you're doing so great. Yeah, well, hanging in there, and and you know we we're gonna get into a lot of different subjects. I think this as we talk. Um, the first thing I wanted to talk about is I had noticed that you have a a new instruction video out. I think it is, and probably even a book, right? So <laughs> on the grid method. So tell us a little bit about that and how you got into doing this. Actually, if if you remember when we had done the, um, it could have been two thousand. 11 when we did the artist mentors online and we had the group up there mm -hmm. i was working on a very large <clears throat> painting in the studio and i had lots of lines and ribbons and strings and all this um, yeah. that i was demonstrating how i'm using that to compose such a large and complex painting right and from that time period i um really found that that helped me so much and i also incorporated that in my teaching methods what I call the magic grid. Mm -hmm. And over time, so literally it's been 10 years in its development of me making a very um, simplistic way of um, um, giving that information out to people. Mm -hmm. um, we recently did with Eric Rhodes, um, the um, video crew, we did 
um, three videos called The Magic Grid, one on um, the whole process, and then one on portrait and one on still life. You know, it works um, for whatever subject you're doing. Anyway, my Magic Grid video, I think is, I, I say it's criminal. You know, like I, I show my, because I think it's illegal in 17 states because the universities do not want me to teach this method because it's so encompassing and so easy for people to finally understand how to become an artist. All sets of painting from uh, drawing, brushwork, composition, color, value seem to fall into place so easily in this method that I um, share. So the, the magic grid starts with the underlying structure of uh, compositional lines throughout the painting. So dot, line, and mass. And so really I'm breaking down the two-dimensional surface right away with a mosaic of shapes. And the way I like to teach is that, you know, we're painting flat shapes. We're not painting things, you know, and getting over right. the thing right. thinking, mm -hmm. which is really important. Once you understand that we're just doing little puzzle pieces of color on a canvas, <laughs> it's so easy, it, it's criminal. And so anyway, <laughs> the way I, you know, over the years of um, sharing it uh, with some others during my classes, um, sharing it with myself to find the best ways to help my painting, you know, I really came up with a very um, thorough video. It's really clearly spoken and understanding, and it takes the, the math out of when people look at things that also talk about the, <clears throat> the um, golden section and the different type of grid system dynamic symmetry, which in many of the few books that are out there from way back, it's very kind of mind numbing. And I make it really simple. And I, I'm just, it really just kind of re-enthused my own painting. I just mm -hmm. love, I use it every painting I do and it just makes me more creative and um, I have fun with it. I'm really enjoying it. So I really, um, you know, I've done a lot of good books and I think this is just another another step that makes it even easier for people. So, right. yeah, I remember one of the lessons that we did in ammo. Remember, we had to draw the squares like on a sixteen twenty. The I don't know hundred and some hundred and I don't know, but we had little squares and we had to put just one color in the square. So I'm wondering, is that the beginning? Was that the beginning of really starting to think about that magic grid or? Um, you already not been doing it. That was that was more an exercise on value control, temperature uh, changes. You okay. Know, try to maintain them in there, but in a yeah. sense, it's not different. So, you know what I what the magic grid does, for instance, like when we hold out our thumb and we're drawing life drawing, and we're, we're measuring, right? Yep. And if we're if I'm painting the figure ahead or whatever, I'm looking for plumb lines and things mm. like that. So, right. so by just having this structure to start helps us with drawing because. You have many plumb lines and angles. It makes things easier to see. Right. Then when you fill in a mosaic, one little piece of color, like you're talking about one little square with brushwork, we forget about the things. So it's like, what color is it? I have to decide what shape, where is that shape? You know, where in the process of your canvas is that shape? So that's your drawing. You get that in the right place, then your drawing is correct. You know, what is the shape of the shape? Um, yeah. It makes you determine a shape. So what... I find it, it's really like a decision maker. You know, when people go up to the painting, well, I don't know what to paint. I don't know how to compose it. Right away, this gives you kind of ideas, suggestions how to do it. Yeah. Then every mark you put on the canvas is not a brush mark, but it's a shape that's filled in with your brush. Uh, so okay. It, okay. it tells you, okay, here's my shape. When I look at your head, <laughs> I have to break up your head into mosaics, little triangles, right mm -hmm. here, a little circle here, a long shape there. Monet said the same thing. All he looks for is a long line of blue, a triangle of turquoise, a round circle of yellow. Mm -hmm. So this helps us with that decision-making process that people usually when they start painting or painting for many, many years, just think they're painting things and subject. And so we have to change our thinking. It's a language. Mm -hmm. Just like me learning Chinese, I have to just learn everything new. Right. And so, but when we have our own language, 
it makes a new language more difficult. When we have a lot of bad habits established from years and years of painting incorrectly, mentally incorrectly, mm. then it's harder to change. So this method, if you've never painted, I can have someone in a couple of days do amazing things. Oh, and, cool. and I also have had done lectures and little demonstrations with some very high professional painters. And they, with the knowledge that they have, the expertise that they have, they really saw that, boy, this, they grabbed onto it. And I just saw in one day their work changed. You know, they were great painters and they just went to another level and kind of pissed me off that <laughs> they did so well, better than me. <laughs> so it's, so I'm really enjoying uh, sharing that method and I highly recommend, um, you know, I'm not a hard salesman with, you know, I've had four good selling books out there and and I feel really proud of all of them and they mm -hmm. do well, but I really think that this is a game changer for people. You yeah. know, if they um, just do that, it can truly change the way that, the way they paint, and they'll end up to paint the way an artist needs to think, the language of a, an artist, the vocabulary of an artist. Cool, cool. Um, just so my audio only listeners are, can they find this, um, the book and the, and the video and everything out on your website, which is kevinmcpherson.com? Yeah, if you look up, uh, yeah, it's probably listed on my um, website. And then it's um, the, um, if you look up Kevin McPherson's, it will come up on okay. Google or wherever it comes up. So right now you're in Mexico mm -hmm. and um, prior to COVID, you were doing a lot of work in China. Um, and I'm sure that the grid method was the magic grid, excuse me, was um, also devised more with some of the gift things. I mean, you have gotten, I guess where I'm going with this question, Kevin, is you have, you know, when I met you, it was plain air, it was landscape, and then you turned to portrait mm -hmm. maybe a, a few years after we were working closer together, or maybe it overlapped a little bit. So, and and I know a lot of what keeps us going as artists is that challenge to do something different with our painting. Can can you talk a little bit about, I mean, you've been painting for a long time. I mean, college, you studied it in college and you came out from there and this was your love along with traveling and you combined the two, which it was wonderful and is wonderful. So talk a little bit about you know, the inspiration and how that keeps you going, you know, all these different changes that you have seen through your career as an artist. Yeah, I think for myself, uh, I feel blessed that, you know, I followed that path and kind of made my own path of discovery and it always worked out. You know, it doesn't say that it's not a struggle at times, you know, right. or, but I think when you're following something you're doing, you know, expect some struggles. You know, if you're learning to golf, I think you golf you and Tom. Right? Yeah, yeah, we uh, used to, and, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, but you know, you have your self-imposed goals, you know, to mm -hmm. do something. And and it's very much like golf in the sense, it's a, a very um, knowledge base and muscle memory type of thing, but you have to be the intuitive um, player out there to really become the great player. Mm -hmm. But painting, I went to university in Northern Arizona University and studied illustration. Right. And I became an illustrator. And at that time, that was my goal to be the best illustrator, like, like Bob Peak or Bernie Fuchs, you know, these mm -hmm. type of great painters um, uh, that were doing illustration. And I remember I went to the illustrators workshop, which way back then in 1980, um, it was a fortunate thing. It was the best of the top illustrators did a workshop, just like now we offer, let's say the Planar Painters of America right. group would offer a workshop. So you had the best of the best. And it, so it was phenomenal. So my goal was to become a great artist, a great illustrator. Then I went to Scottsdale Artist School when that, that started and all of the great artists and illustrators from New York were moving to Arizona. They um, came out there. And so I was fortunate to study with them thinking it would improve my illustration, which it did, but it, it got me painting outside and improved the way I see and work as an artist. And then so soon that kind of just evolved into, now I see another direction. So I, I left a very uh, lucrative illustration business and evolved into becoming a painter. So I totally walked away from, you know, a good financial situation and a growing reputation in the 
frustration feel to then pursue something that was like starting at ground zero again. And as you said, with the travel, I've always been a traveler, you know, hitchhiked since I was 12 years old yeah. and, uh, you know, travel all around the country by myself sometimes, hitchhiking <laughs> at 16 and whatever. And so the incorporation of painting and travel was a perfect fit. Yeah. And so I, I did that. But um, getting to where the portraits came in, um, actually, I was just asked by the Portrait Society of America to um, speak in Washington uh, this uh, May coming up at their conference. So that, I thought that was kind of good because good I am you. known as a landscape yeah. painter. Yeah. And, um, you know, I'll do, I think at the name of my, um, one of the presentations I'll, I'll call about face. And good. What, the reason I named it that it was because I, I went to China, for instance, as mm -hmm. a landscape painter. Mm -hmm. But when I went there, um, it, I guess being around so many people and faces, it was interesting. I live in the woods in Taos, as you know, and we might not right. see another person for three weeks. You know, right. so landscape is right out your door. And <laughs> the pond. You don't, you don't have to, um, you know, get a model or this or that. So I went back to China by myself in 2011, I think it was. Mm -hmm. Didn't know a person, didn't know a word of Chinese, didn't paint portraits. And I just um, went to a massage parlor and met some girls. I said, would you pose for me? And so yeah, I hit the mother load. So all the girls would pose <laughs> for me. Yeah. So that was like the perfect gig. You know, yeah. so for a month, I just painted portraits. They didn't know who I was. They didn't know any reputation of what, you know, my history was, which mm -hmm. is good. I painted portraits, which is a subject, you know, new to me. So I had no expectation. So again, like learning a sport like skiing or golf if you've never done it you know you're willing to fail and you know you accept your inadequacies and things like that so yeah. there was a lot of no pressure it felt very relaxed in a way right. um, because I didn't say oh it's a terrible painting you know I just move forward enjoy the process so that kind of just opened up a whole uh, new door to me and so I, I went to China maybe, I think, 28 different times over the last 10 years mm -hmm. and um, went to all different areas, uh, rural, high-end different places, some of the most primitive places you could imagine and painted along the way landscapes and portraits and got to practice my Chinese and uh, meet <laughs> so many different people. And so it, it opened yeah. a, up a lot of interesting things. And it was not something that the gallery you know, said, oh, we'd like your portraits or, or actually it's quite opposite. We didn't want your portrait, you know, you're known mm -hmm. as a landscape painter. So I did it totally for myself. Mm -hmm. um, and um, many of those paintings, you know, I have hundreds of them. And I, I did do a big show in Sedona one time with them. And I put them in a, a few different uh, competitions and one best of show on many of them, you know, for mm -hmm. some of them. So, but mainly, I didn't display them, haven't really displayed them, and they're, they were for myself, my own growth, my my own inspiration. Yeah. Um, I just remember at the Salma Gundy, and we met Chris um, Agadini, who was your mentor, right? Mm -hmm. um, and and a professor, I think, at Northern Arizona, if I'm... Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah. So, and I remember we had your reflections on the pond in the main area of the Salma Gundy, and then we had some of your first probably done Chinese paintings one that won a um the very big prize was the old man with the cigarette remember oh, yeah. that yeah um and I love that painting especially I mean I would come back in and look and go oh my gosh there's a person way back there and oh you know and how you worked all of that in so mm -hmm. you know I'm 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 sure that there was this recognition of painting something different in a portrait, but that you probably knowing you as well as I do, you took some of the things that you learned in portrait painting and brought that over to plain air painting. I'm, I'm sure because I mean, you know, it's, it, it ups your game. It's, it's a totally different technique, but yet you learn so much from it. Is that a true statement? Well, definitely. definitely um, yeah. Whatever, like when you're painting landscape, for instance, if you paint something difficult architecturally, for instance, mm, yeah, um, you know, that kind of helps your drawing, helps you get things in the right place, perhaps. 
then in the evening, if you paint a sunset, you don't have time. You're just going on intuition. Mm -hmm. So that intuition exercise then goes back into something when you paint it more difficult, like and then that architectural training gets your hand to maybe get it in the right place. You know, when you're on the intuitive. Same with portrait, you have to be more accurate with the shapes in the right place. You know, a tree can be very expressive and still look like a tree, but if you get a little too far out on your face, it won't look like Linda Fizzler and stuff. So, <laughs> it's okay so, if it doesn't look like me. <laughs> yeah, but that's part of it. Um, you know, just just make me look better. My, that's yeah. all. <laughs> for myself, I like to continually um, challenge different subjects, uh, yeah. different locations, and you know, just to keep it interesting for me. Right. And I think I've always admired that about you, Kevin, is that you've always, you know, it's like, I have an interest in portrait, I'm going to go do portrait. I have an interest in, you know, going to China and doing China. I've always admired where, you know, it's like, I'm not going to stay in this one place where I know I can continue to paint the way that I paint plain air and, you know, be in galleries and make money. It's like, I'm going to go do this now. And I'm going to like, you know, it's almost like I'm going to let people see that not that you, you know, it's not a, I'm going to let people see that I can do other things, but it's more like, you know, I'm going to prove to myself that I can do that and I can do it well. And it's going to affect everything else that I'm doing. I've always admired your exploration into and adventures into other things. You've never, I've never seen I've never seen fear in you. I haven't, mm. I, you know, even, even though we haven't been, you know, talking very much or whatever back and forth, I still, you follow you and I still go, wow, you know, there he goes again. <laughs> so, like, mm -hmm. No fear. <laughs> so. Well, I had fun. Um, I got a couple pieces in here. This is actually, um, wow. Does it look like a Buddha to you? Looks yeah. Okay. I can see the yeah, eyes. So, so <laughs> from some of my travels to, um, Bali or, or Bangkok or China, no matter where, you know, uh -huh. some of the things you see influence you on stuff. Mm -hmm. So these are all the shells that are on my beach, you know, they, oh, nice. that I pick up the little funny little shells, this one here. And then this is a skull of a sea lion. And so <laughs> I took this skull and I painted it, gold leafed it, and then I glued all these things. On. Anyway, I've been creating a whole bunch of different things you know, just letting my mind want something. I'm, so during the COVID time, I, I don't think I painted for 15 months, but I did a whole bunch of creative. So every day I yeah. felt like a kid in a day camp. You know, it was fun. Yeah, yeah, cool. So so that's a little bit how COVID affected you is um, you kind of took some downtime and, and explored other things, which yeah, I mean, we exploration is probably your middle name, right? I mean, I know yeah. it's Dan, but. <laughs> but um yeah, we, I was here for 18 months down on the beach in Mexico, um, yeah. and there were hardly no people there because most of the people, a lot of uh, Americans and Canadians live in the area that I'm at, but they all went back. And so there were maybe only four or five people in this oh, wow. whole area. So didn't see anybody. So every day I'd just walk on the beach, I'd find rocks, I'd start carving rocks, and whatever I would see, you know, I w yeah. it just got me so excited. I couldn't wait to get up every day and go out exploring, like when we were kids, going into the woods and finding stuff. Yeah, it was really yeah. fun. And so, little people thought I was going crazy, which I, <laughs> but well. I never, to be honest, I never felt more inspired. Like every day, I would walk on the beach and find rocks that inspired me to look like mm -hmm. something, and maybe carve into it. I just see something there, and I swore there was this being channeled from the spirits to find stuff it was a really good feeling <laughs> yeah yeah i mean in, in moving you know like i don't know how long you lived in taos but you know you have your taos place you have your place in mexico where you're at right now um you've gone to china i moved from middletown ohio to Asheville, and it's just and you know i go out on hikes with friends and you know they're 600 feet 100 yards ahead of me and i'm standing there just looking at the view and going wow you know, and yeah. it's just, how can I capture that atmosphere? And how, you know, how would I do that? So I'm like, like you, I'm trying to figure out how to capture, you know, the mountains around Asheville, the Blue Ridge Mountains and, and different things like that. All of the the different tourist attractions, like the Biltmore and all this is like, 
you know, I, I love what when somebody's actually outside painting the Biltmore and I just go kind of walking by and go, mm, yeah, like everybody else. OK, <laughs> 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 because they want to make sure they got that that architecturally correct. And it's a beautiful place. But, you know, it, it's just it's interesting. Um, just it does. It's so stimulating to take yourself out of the way that you have been painting and and say, you know, how else can I do it? Um, I've probably spent a lot more time out on the on the hiking trails and the and the cycle, the bicycle, just looking around, saying, "How would I capture that?" And my, you know, twenty five miles later, I'm like, "Oh, I guess I better turn around." <laughs> and cycle. Yeah, it's hard. Out. It's hard not, you know, for it sounds like you and like me. Whenever I'm somewhere golfing or with my buddies, yeah, I'm so distracted visually. Mm -hmm. you know, it's hard not to. Yeah. Um, yeah. That, Talk to me a little bit about Art Ambassadors for a Colorful World. Is that correct? Correct. correct. Yeah. And I know you went down to Guatemala. And uh, what in this in November? Yeah, November fifteenth. I got back. Oh, okay. Um, and then we, prior to that, in August, we went to Peru, and that was good. Cusco, that was a phenomenal place. I loved it oh, there. Wow. So that was really neat. And um, yeah, we painted up in Machu Picchu, and we've been doing a lot of things in Guatemala, and actually. Um, there's a wonderful lady, Leslie Bear and Mel Dinkle, who started Shayla Aid Local Hope 35 years ago in, right. in Guatemala. And mm -hmm. I met her oh, 15 years ago, maybe. And we just hit it off. I was so inspired by her um, story and her energy and what she did down in Guatemala. I went down there right away with her. And, and that kind of inspired me to start my own foundation called art ambassador for a colorful world mm -hmm. because I go let's say in China or in Mexico right. whenever I'm somewhere it seems like kids are always attracted to you when you're painting <laughs> and I like that and so we I started going to some really uh, rural areas in Sichuan, Banat, China and Yunnan, China um, really right on the Laos border and the most primitive school I went there many many times when it was just the muddiest little place you could imagine and they transformed it into a very nice school now but I got to work with the kids there every year for many years and so um, I like to, to go to places that are difficult for the kids to get art supplies or things like that they don't have art teachers and it was just fun and, yeah uh, a lot of and so we we've been going down uh, doing trips down to the Guatemala the one village San Martin that we work with uh, over and over and the kids again you know we've known them since they were young and um, their parents and grandmas are weavers, expert wow. weavers, like world-class weavers. And, and so we help them to keep the, that in their culture, give them opportunity. And, um, and the organization I work with, Shayla Aid, that I um, work together just, for, so they help us put together trips to bring adult painters. And then we do like teaching and mentoring and traveling and painting to Antigua, Quetzaltenango, Lake Atilan, different great places. And then in addition, we spend a few days in the small village working with the kids and all the adult painters, if they like, they um, get involved with doing some of that activity and they love it. It's it just cool. very tough. So yeah. it, with the COVID, we were doing a great project in Mexico here. We were, I had about 500 of the school kids the whole town came out. We did um, uh, a big mural on one of the old buildings on the beach in the, on the Malacan. And so we had all the kids involved with that. And it was fun. That was literally the week before the lockdown of everything. So it kind oh. of, um, until last year, you know, we really couldn't do any more programs because of the difficulty and stuff. Yeah. So, yeah. so there was nice, like this year was the first time that, um, you can go down to Guatemala, say, without the mask on, and it made a big difference and stuff. Yeah, and having to worry about being able to get on a plane with, um, you know, so and testing and, yeah, all of that. Yeah. It, was, just, it was yeah. difficult. Yeah, other people join us. So, you know, we, we'll be doing more of that. It's just a wonderful place and different places. And, um, you know, it's a small organization. And Lori Putman is uh, hey, Lori, yeah. with, with me, and she's terrific. She. I can't do things without her there. It's, it's really wonderful. So great. Yeah. So when you are, when you're teaching the kids, I'm assuming you're not, you know, like they're not standing behind easels. Well, 
they may be standing behind easels, but what I'm getting at is it, it's not like how you type teach your workshops it's more them having more, fun with art or yeah or giving them an opportunity like um you know some of the little places you know you can't even get supplies so one time i right. was able to buy ping pong paddles you know say oh we can draw some portraits on ping pong paddles. like what kind of supplies can you even get to some of these places and um you know this when one of the great projects we did recently down in um, guatemala they have the kite festival, which is right on the Day of the Dead weekend. So mm -hmm. that they have these giant kites that are big as a house that they um, create and hundreds of thousands of people come to this one area. And they let the kites go up to um, kind of greet their dead ancestors and kind of make a link between, you know, a communication link. Anyway, oh, nice. kites are a big um, historical factor in uh, Guatemala. So we had the kids make their own kites and, and then try to fly them. That was fun. And then the <laughs> we peels, the um, weavings that they weave for their clothing. We just had the kids design their own, you know, on, on paper and stuff. And how creative these kids are, you know, how inherent some of their um, graphic thinking is because, you know, when the ladies weave their clothing, it's coming out of their head and it takes three months to make this complex design it's just wow. unbelievable i'll send you some pictures just yeah. you know as another thing how i get inspired you know like i showed you that skull and the mm -hmm. the buddha head you know how that gets into your head and then you see things different that if you didn't explore a different country or culture maybe you wouldn't think of that and then the weaving the color combinations that they put together are so different than what we would think of um and the kids had this I think inherently in, in their work. So I give them, I don't go really teach them. We may give them the supplies, the concept of what we're gonna do, a little focus, but then we let them just have fun with it. And, right. and they really, you know, it's something that, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, why don't you do it in the US? You know, I've done it all different places. And, you know, I, I do it where I happen to be. Mm -hmm. you know, and, you know, if you can make a couple of kids happy, you know, what does it matter if you do it here? or in Portugal or wherever it might be, right? Right. So, and what, when I say underprivileged kids sometimes, you know, there's poor kids in the U.S. too, but what we can have access to is so different than what little they can have access to. So, yeah. But again, yeah, it doesn't absolutely. matter. Like this, this was one of, like, here's inspired them. Um, one day what, during the COVID or a month, I am... Um, this is in Wanda's studio, so I painted her okay. uh, chest with just different things. They're very different than I would normally do, but right. some of those type, type of imageries and designs are kind of inspired by some of the things I see maybe down in Guatemala or wherever. Right. Cool. So, yeah, yeah it's so helpful. Thank you. Um, yeah. yeah. So you were saying that Lori travels with you to Guatemala. Do you have other folks that travel with you to like to Peru or to any of the other Places. Well, lots of, um, she's with the art ambassador and she's been um, with me as my co-partner, mentoring partner, and um, also helping on the, the program itself. Okay. Um, so her, she and I are the leaders on these recent ones. Okay. And then we get artists from all over who want to travel with us, you know. Cool. Um, yeah, you really partner. got a network going there, Kevin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> great, yeah. great. So yeah, it's good to hear. Um you, you've been to China, you've been to Guatemala, I know you've been to France, I know you've been to Italy or different places in Europe and all of that. And, and you really do immerse yourself into that, to each of their cultures, don't you? It provides even more. Try to. Yeah. yeah. You know, but, um, and, you know, we spend a lot of time in Mexico and my Spanish is not very good. When I was young, I was brilliant, but now it's not so good. And then, <laughs> you know, when we spent uh, many years in France doing programs, um, you know, I, taught myself French and it was so-so too, but, um, and then the China, you know, I taught that language. So it, the more you can kind of immerse yourself and get a part of, you know, know the people, you know, I think you get a deeper appreciation for where you're at. So it's a different than um, say going as a tourist mm -hmm. quickly to a place, you know, so, and then yeah. for instance, in China, um, you know, I, my books are translated in Chinese. So, you know, I have a big reputation in China, so I can go 
many places and people I could connect with artists, mm. you know, from there or Europe, you know, especially with Facebook, you know, we can go anywhere and really mm. feel like we have a relationship easily um, put together. Yeah. Have you stayed in touch with um, Ben Ho and Mary May by chance? I have not. But You um, haven't? Okay. <laughs> yeah. Have you? Yeah. Uh, no, I haven't actually. Uh, but I, uh, watching him paint behind their gallery, mm -hmm. I think about that almost every day. Mm -hmm. I mean, the, the and when you were talking a little bit about the grid, and, and I watched him set some things up in his painting, he had I, it was not as extensive as I think you know, it, but you could tell that that was there. I mean, you could see him drawing the lines. Is how it started. I know you were. <laughs> Yeah, you were off painting and getting set up because you were painting. So I was kind of in the middle watching you paint and watching Ben paint. And oh, it's cool. just, you know, that was, I, I learned so much just from standing there watching you guys paint for about an hour, hour and a half, however long it was, versus me sitting there trying to capture the landscape. I took a few pictures and stuff, but um, yeah, that was, that really left its mark in me. And yeah, um, when you go to places and you could easily connect with, other artists like John Crump, you know. Yeah, John, oh, I remember John. Him. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and but you know, all over the world. You know, yeah, it's kind of nice that we have that um, social media that it is easy to meet some friends. You know, mm -hmm. in many different countries. You go to Norway, and I'm sure you can connect with somebody. Yeah, yeah, yeah it it's it it's fun. yeah, that is fun from and and so helpful too. Um, that social media can bring that that to us. Um, yeah. So. So what do you have coming up next? I know you said something about Portrait of America. You're going to be there. So. Yeah, um, Juan and I are actually going to do a um, trip uh, to South America. We're going to do a cruise, and we're going to do painting along, along the way. I think it's a 21-day cruise from uh, Buenos Aires to Santiago. And so instead of jumping off and rushing to all the um, tourist locations, you know, we'll use that as a little painting exploration thing. So we'll get to places that are interesting and do a painting probably at every stop that we do. Yeah. And then if actually um, with um, China being locked down for so long, actually one of my good um, friends from China, she's going to come this Christmas. She's finally able to fly out. She's going to stay a month down here and we're going to do some filming together for some programs over in China. And she, she's a great gal that I met very early on when I was just doing the volunteers with the kids. She was working for the government at that time. And I was the first one to ever take her out painting. And she got so inspired. She totally quit her job in the government. She, um, oh, wow. she, um, she wrote a book on watercolor painting. She's inspiring thousands of people doing some uh, online lessons and uh, different retreats. So it totally changed her life. Just, oh, great. Uh, yeah, and she actually named her little kid, Little Kevin. Oh, so, yeah. <laughs> nice. But he doesn't look like me. Wanda's not worried about that. So. <laughs> that's good. That's he has big, big eyes, you know. So yeah. anyway. So but, Wanda's yeah, still painting? Uh, yeah, and Wanda, Wanda and I went down to Cabo San Lucas last week um, for a week, and we just kind of relaxed down there, just a slightly different location. And I got her back doing watercolor and that kind Good. of means. And she's, she's amazing. She cannot paint for six months and somehow she always gets better. I don't know what she does. <laughs> it's kind of amazing. She doesn't have any pressure. She doesn't have the pressure that you have, Kevin. So. <laughs> yeah. But actually at this time in my life too, um, you know, I'm, I'm enjoying it as much as I ever have. And I, I feel like there's no pressure, like, I don't push to sell things, you know, I, I'm just doing them for myself, and, you know, the way you should do them. Yeah. You know. Yeah. We had a little bit of a conversation. I, as I said earlier, I recorded an art chat yesterday with Michael Harding and it's really kind of funny two days in a row that we were doing this and, and both of you, Michael and you have said the same thing, which is, you know, you have to paint for yourself. Don't put that pressure on you to, you know, say I'm going to sell as many paintings or, or whatever, but, the ones that you really put yourself into seem to be the ones that a lot of interest comes from. And yeah. Um, yeah. yeah. I think if you do it for the right reasons, you'll find the audience, you know, like you only have to find one other person that likes your painting really, but, mm -hmm. you know, it, it's a different thing. Um, 
when you are making a career, which I did my whole life, uh, you have to make money to survive, to continue to do what we do. Mm -hmm. But unfortunately I have, um, but if you're truly don't have the necessity to sell, that gives you more freedom to take chances and, you know, don't worry about some things. Yeah. You, you know, I, so with that pressure, you know, let's say you are feeding a family and that's your job, you know, definitely you're going to feel a different pressure than someone who is truly doing it for their pleasure and a hobby. Mm -hmm. And when you do approach it that way, then usually someone comes up to you and say, Oh, would you sell that thing? You know, so. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's, it, like I said, it's always, it's always interesting to watch where you're going and what you're doing and what you're exploring and the adventures that you have. Um, it's, it's, it's interesting to be on the outside looking in, so to speak on that kind of, of thing. So uh, is there anything else that that's coming up um, that you might want to um, talk so about? Then I, then I got the portrait um, um, society convention in May, and then I'm going to go to Italy for a little bit of painting, then back nice. to Taos. And um, but there won't be snow on the ground. You won't I be know. able to ski. <laughs> so. Well, I'm actually. Well, I am going back in February for skiing. Oh, you are okay. Cool. Yeah. So after um, Chile, I'll, I'll go back to Taos for a month of skiing. So okay. that that will be perfect. Yeah, watch out, yeah. <laughs> Kevin's going to be on the slopes. <laughs> yeah. I'm actually, I'm pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm really good. I don't know how I got, I had a little mini stroke a few years back and I forgot every, all my bad habits of everything. So I'm better golfer, better skier. Oh, good. <laughs> so, oh yeah. my goodness. Well, sorry to hear about the mini stroke, but I'm glad that you're golfing yeah. better and skiing better. So yeah. <laughs> yeah. Wow. I didn't, I didn't know that. So yeah. Quit eating that Grater's ice creams I used to send you. I know, exactly. <laughs> Oh yeah. So anyway, um, I think we pretty much covered a lot of stuff unless there's, um, anything else in addition that you want to, to talk yeah, about or. Yeah. Well, I'm proud of you keep on doing what you're doing and always oh, uh, <laughs> doing some nice thing for other people too. So thank you uh, for that. Oh, well, thank you. I appreciate you saying yeah. that. That means a lot. So again, check out Kevin's website, kevinmcpherson.com. Um, also check out his, uh, other organization and Art Ambassadors for a Colorful World. Uh, that also has a website that you can look at. And for the YouTube audience, that will be displayed uh, for you. But for the uh, audio audience, if you are audio only audience, again, it's kevinmcpherson.com and um, Google Art Ambassadors for a Colorful World. It will be the first link that comes up. So no worries with that. Um, Kevin, thank you for your time. I appreciate you doing this. Um, it was great to catch up with you as well. So well, thank you. Good to see you. Yeah. Good to see you. So hopefully we'll stay in touch more. <laughs> so, um, okay. okay, everyone. Thanks for listening. Bye, Kevin. Thank you. Bye, Linda. Art Chat is made possible by the support of the Artistics Harmonies Association. Create your next aha experience with us.